Yes. Good and to see you. for a split second, there was a doubt that you would actually um, jump into the situation right away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am, and uh, just want to help you get it run. And I think Charles is still trying. There's been a few technical issues. <laughs> I think experienced all of us, and yeah. I apologize. For that. But here we are, so we can go ahead. And uh, I guess I will just say hello. Um, okay. And um, who would maybe like to moderate in the absence of Charles? Uh, John, act as Charles. Yes. Maybe Jonathan, would you like to delete? If you want me to, sure. I really don't know, understand what this panel is about, but I'll figure it out as we go. Well, that's okay. Hard. Okay, great. Okay, great. Okay, see you later. Are we alive? So that's good. Now we are live. Yes, exactly. Are we live? Okay. Yes. Yes. Ah, yes, yes we are. Okay, hello everybody. How are you guys doing? Great. Great. Hello, hello everyone. Hello. So, should we go around first? Say where we're located. Like I'm in the United States. I'm in Canada, Toronto, Canada. Nice. I'm in Europe, in Lisbon. Very nice. So today we're going to be talking about globally green policies. And um, one of the biggest things is I'm more into like solar and feeding people and using solar as refrigeration now um, to be able to store food at places that are food deserts and places like that. But I also would love to know more about the kind of energy and stuff that you guys are working with that's more green. So can you share a little bit about it? Uh, sure. I'm uh, representing uh – deal flow that's about uh, sustainable and green. And in uh, Canada, we have uh, a new company. Uh, so far, they've produced uh, three megawatts. But the major feature to everything that they do is that there's no emissions whatsoever at all. Uh, and I think that's important because, you know, uh, sometimes they come on and they tell us we can drink coffee. And then two years later, they say, oh, my God, don't drink coffee at all. You'll die. Uh, so I think it's the same thing with emissions. Whatever standards we think are acceptable at this time, I think as we go forward, we'll find more and more uh, information that says no, uh, that level is not uh, acceptable. So, you know, doing a, a project like that, uh, they're next uh, going up to 40 megawatts. Uh, and uh, for my own project, I raised 350 million US wow. Wow. In, in order to go. Uh, from uh, waste, literally waste to energy, uh, and build the plant. And since I've seen this technology with no emissions, at first I was highly uh, suspicious uh, because I didn't see how you could get uh, in that uh, direction. But I'm a believer uh, now. Uh, and the things that I think about uh, globally green uh, policies is that, um, you know, it's kind of convenient for current leaders to say that we're going green in 2050 or we're going green in 2060. Like, what does that mean? Uh, you know, the crisis is right now. Uh, and I think that, like everything else in the world, uh, sometimes as citizens, we're just told no, uh, no, uh, you can't do that anymore. Fossil fuels out or whatever it is they say. But I, my concern is until we draw these policies closer uh, to us, uh, we're not really achieving what's necessary. That's my opinion. Natalie? Um, yes, rule of policies. Um, we've had a um, um, roller coaster period um, within the um, past, not only related to COVID and uh, pandemic and uh, 
um, all the fallouts uh, and the aftermath of it, but also in relation to actually leadership that uh, uh, European Union um, undertook during this period to actually um, charge forward with a number of policies which are, I think, were instrumental to get us where we are and hopefully to get us much further within the next five and ten years and just very briefly what those policies are um, and uh, how it relates to what I'm doing. Um, Green Deal uh, came up and became the reality uh, last year in December. Um, the targets of the Green Deal uh, for reaching carbon neutrality um, uh, in Europe as, as the uh, continent uh, also were pushed forward. So now we have the target of 55% uh, renewables towards uh, within the next uh, decade, which is uh, higher as well. So there is the ambition uh, grows as well. Um, and the Green Deal is not only about um, reaching climate neutrality, but also um, about uh, um, sustainable growth um, and also about an opportunity um, to, um, to get the economic uh, growth, uh, but in a sustainable way, uh, along with so-called tandem um, uh, combination of the renewables and the digital growth in, um, in Europe. So that was instrumental, uh, but the roller coaster didn't stop there, and a number of uh, other uh, policies came into play, which are um, an extension of the main one, the Green Deal. So we've seen the uh, green hydrogen or hydrogen strategy um, uh, that came up in July of uh, this year with uh, hugely ambitious, uh, ambitious targets um, within the next five years, uh, 10 years until uh, 2050. Um, and uh, so this is this is the engine behind um, a lot of things, you know. So the hydrogen is is nothing new, uh, and green hydrogen is is also nothing new. Uh, I agree with Claire that uh, a lot of those technologies were there, so they're called uh, uh, old bottle, new wine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but uh, but the the role of policy and the uh, trickle down effect in the world, um, I think, was tremendous as a result of it. And now, um, from what I understood, forty five percent of the countries uh, uh, with the largest uh, GDP already um, are working on the hydrogen plans. Um, and, uh, uh, well, in, 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 in Europe, uh, a lot of the countries already declared their national plans. So it's, it's, a, um, it's beyond a continental movement, I think, um, and uh, spearheaded by, uh, I think, European Union on uh, a number of levels, because the policy is inclusive as well. It's for the European continent, but also uh, outside of the European uh, borders. So, and this type of leadership in this moment is uh, is necessary um, as the within the COVID recovery uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as as the company, we are working on those uh, three pillars. Uh, one pillar is the renewable generation solar. Um, the second one is the green hydrogen and uh, uh, digital solutions. Nice. One of the reasons I really got into solar and renewable energy, um, most people don't realize that, but when you see the food trucks and everything going by, they have to run diesel 24-7. And also everything that goes in the landfills is methane gases. So yeah. I just can't believe that all night long when a, a truck is going and they're just parked on the side of the road, they're running diesel all day long. And so that's why we came up with the program and we've actually implemented it. That's why we're turning in a lot of these uh, trucks and into solar, to actually solar refrigeration that they're, they're running 100% off grid as well. And I think that'll make a huge change. Um, it's, it's harder in the States and stuff to implement things. So we're just doing it. We didn't even ask permission. Right. We just started building them um, and we're feeding millions of people. Uh, instead of, you know, with COVID, with everything that was going on, as you guys know, supply chains and energy, there was no refrigeration and everything was getting dumped in landfills. 
we even had governors calling us about euthanizing the cattle because they had no place to put it. There was no processing farms, you know, and then on here in the States, you see that people on TV pouring out milk and stuff because there was no refrigeration. And you think yeah. about the people that can't afford milk. So that's where we jumped right into action and started building completely off grid solar 40 foot refrigerated containers. Um, but I'd love to learn more about your guys' energy and stuff and how like we can all come together because we can end food insecurity. There's so much that we can do together with renewable energy as well. And we just need to do it. We need to work together. You know what would be amazing, I think, is that uh, COVID-19 was imposed on us. And nobody asked us if it was okay, uh, if it came into our airwaves or any. We weren't consulted on anything. Uh, and it took control of us. And, you know, to me, it's such an opportunity because previously we would say it takes six years to make a vaccine. That's that. And that's just the way it is. Yep. Then, but with COVID, uh, when push came to shove, uh, oh, my God, we all started sharing all our information because we were panicked as mankind. Uh, all of us were threatened, so we all threw into uh, the pot. And, you know, if we could have something like that uh, affect us with energy, if we could have a COVID-19 of energy, uh that happened, uh, that sounds like a terrible thing to say, uh, but I think it would bring genius to the forefront, like absolute genius, uh, because we need our milk, we need our food, we need energy, etc. And the minute it's affecting us, like right in the face, uh, we will uh, do something about it. I'd be calling you all night long. Right. I'd be calling Jonathan all night long. Uh, you know, just trying to put pieces together and I'm working on this. What do you have? Um, so, you know, COVID in some ways could be a wonderful, wonderful example uh, for us. Look at all the things we've done. Our governments uh, one day in March just said, go home, go home. You hear me? Go home. And that's it. Uh, and we did it. We did it. Uh, and I, I think that we are in North America far behind uh, Europe. Um, it makes me sad Every time I think of uh, the agility that your population seem to have, uh, and yet in Canada, um, we applaud ourselves because we got rid of the plastic straw. Same thing in the States. Yes. You know, and our prime minister is announcing that to the world. Look at we, I mean, for God's sakes, it's a straw. It's a straw. So uh, I think that uh, I watch uh, Europe uh, because I watch to see you lead by example, uh, because you have more liberty. Uh, your governments believe a lot more in you uh, than our governments do in us. Uh, so when I see that you have uh, that latitude, Natalie, uh, I watch what you do with it because I don't have the latitude. So I watch to see what you do. And then we find ways to do it under cloak. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there, there, there are many pieces of the puzzle. So policy is one. And as I mentioned, we felt um, a uh, timeliness of the European policies uh, 
also the uh, uh, the influence in the world. But now uh, we need to get to the how we're going to get and reach those targets. Y y you can uh, appreciate, you know, especially after you mentioned uh, your project, um, the scale of the challenge. So if we are to come up with the six gigawatts of uh, um, uh, electrolyzers uh, within the next five years and uh, reaching to uh, much greater numbers within the next 10 years. So that would take uh, a much bigger joint effort that is on the side of the investment, uh, which is global, which is on the side of technology um, and uh, hybridization of technology, which is also global. And the green hydrogen supply chains are also global. So what I'm trying to say, policy is great. It's a, it's a first step. Um, it creates the right sandbox and it activates the, the, all of those communities. But now it is joint effort as to how to do it jointly. And I don't think it's, uh, um, we, sh we should uh, just observe, uh, but with other two or three components, even if the policy is lacking on one side of, uh, uh, of the ocean, uh, other two or three uh, might play a bigger role. Absolutely. I think we have to become a we world. We have to work together. It's not about just me, you, Europe. Like, we have to do this. Um, it was really weird. Like, when I spoke about what I was planning on doing a long time ago, and people were like, we'll never need that. We'll never need refrigeration. You know, there's plenty. And then COVID hit. We were out there from day one getting people food, making sure it doesn't go to landfills. Uh, police would roll up on us and saying, you're non-essential. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're essential. Because it's food to be a landfill. We were putting these, as I was explaining earlier, um, these units where they didn't even have grocery stores, just liquor stores. So they had no fresh fruits, vegetables, and everything was just being dumped. And now we're talking about the vaccines. I've had calls about using these for vaccines because they're going to supposedly they need 600 million vaccines. But instead of having diesel running all the time, we can put these in parking lots. We can have solar and we can take care of it and we can have all the technology you want, face recognition, everything. Um, so solar to me, it's been new, but it's been amazing what we can do. And the amount of people that come out to see it, it's like a brand new toy to them. And one thing I was sharing earlier, a lot of times now, because it's e it's pretty easy, the solar thing, we take people that have just come out of prison or foster care and teach them how to work on these. So everybody who's actually come out and worked on these has now gotten a full-time job with different mm -hmm. organizations. So that's why we have to work together and teach about new technologies mm -hmm. and we can't wait. Yeah. And, and just to build on that point, Jonathan, um, of, of uh, being part of something and even literally sometimes uh, in, in doing it with your own hands, uh, uh, there are examples in, uh, I think we're already running out of time, yeah, exactly. so I would like to ask if there are any questions uh, from, the, uh, from the audience, maybe they can uh, share or share their opinions. That would be great. But um, the, the component of building something with your own hands, there are examples in, in, in Austria in, uh, in a very large region where people uh, literally were so welcoming the uh, uh, biomass projects, renewable biomass projects, so much that they wanted to be part of actually clearing up land and, and came up uh, uh, being part of it. So if there is a support from the community um, uh, from on the town level, on the people level, um, the uh, it, it, it is it, it could be felt, and that's when we become we, uh, and and everyone is part of it. It, can I just ask uh, a protocol question? We all have on our screen right now. Time is up: four minutes, three minutes, fifty nine seconds. Uh, are we supposed to be letting people ask us questions during that time period, or do we wait till it's up and then we have questions? No, I think, uh, I, no. Yeah, this is my first time doing it, but I believe that this is our time, right? It'll probably shut right. off. So let's go to our wonderful audience. Does anybody have any questions? Or suggestions or would like Here's to Here's the curious thing, Jonathan. How do we go to our audience? <laughs> no idea. Uh, so I don't know I'm, where they are. I'm seeing the chat. Um, so I see some of the comments from oh, yeah. Magnus Quant, um, who is suggesting his... Uh, um, 
uh, he's executive chairman and of the um, uh, Sustainability Institute, Resilient uh, Resiliency Institute in uh, Sweden, and he's suggesting combining green energy with other needs is driver. We made a feasibility study, and then he continues on uh, autonomous uh, bus line and found out it could be charged off grid with solar. Do you have any more examples? Uh, I think what he's referring to is the hybridization where we, we can get the mobility and uh, renewable sources of production. Jonathan, maybe in, uh, if you can refer to some examples in, um, uh, in California. Yeah, so it's really interesting. Out here, people don't really know what off-grid is and everything is grid tied solar so people don't understand that as well it's still but we've done everything completely off grid but i believe everything it's possible and like i said we have to work together i'd love to continue these conversations and the only examples right now really i have is being able to fire up these big 480 uh three phase units with solar which everybody thought was impossible and you would think the shipping industry would have thought about this years ago and but now i've learned how to to, it's actually taking the motors and making them smaller, so it's smaller mm -hmm. run times. And so you can mm -hmm. have the power, um, instead of it just hitting really hard, just going nice and smooth and easy to kick it on. So um, mm -hmm. I, I think, think one other thing, thing uh, related to that that's uh, very important, you know, some people look at what's happening in the United States and it's like half of us, have walked into a movie that's a comedy. Half of us have walked into a movie that's a horror flick, and it was the same movie. Uh, and I think that we have to uh, unite the people uh, in agreeing that there is an issue. You're not going to want to solve a problem if I call you, Natalie, or Jonathan late at night and I say, we got a big problem here. We've got a really big problem. You, If you two say to me, I don't think it's a problem. Carl Sagan said it wasn't a problem. Uh, lots of people say it's not a problem. Uh, so I just wanted to close off with all the solutions that we have uh, we have a communication challenge in front of us yeah. uh, because, uh, again, you think it's a comedy and I think it's a horror flick, you know, and uh, we've got to be able to at least agree on that in communications and hopefully the changing of the guard of world leaders uh, is – is changing more to our green side. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in Europe, we outlined um, um, basically that there is the, the energy transformation is, is about decarbonization, decentralization. Um, and uh, so the decentralization component is actually very much linked to democratization. So the example that I would like to use is the energy communities um, and ability not only to generate, but to participate uh, as the flexibility provider, for example, or additional services provider to the overall system um, from, from the community or an individual. It's a, it's a great empowerment, um, I think, on many levels. Um, and uh, being being part and directly uh, either contributing, observing, or uh, being part of is uh, is very important for the overall system. So this is one of the examples of what's uh, what's happening in, in 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 Europe right now, and on both on the policy level because it's uh, the, the European directives are in place and now the member states are adapting them, um, and it's it's up to us how we're going to deliver it actually and what solutions including the digital will impact that but I very much agree with Claire's statement that it's uh, uh, it's it's how we communicate and how we spread the best practices and, and knowledge about this okay. now rumor has it <laughs> that <laughs> our session is over, over yeah. <laughs> but I notice on the top it says we're live so I just wanted to say something to the audience <laughs> Okay. Uh, there was supposed to be six of us. Yes. Our our chair was educated on how to handle all of this uh, and timing. 
Uh, and I noticed that we haven't answered uh, many of your questions. And uh, before we go, uh, I think I speak for the three of us. If you want to email us anything, any comments, uh, questions about this, you know, I, I I don't know what else to offer uh, since we're in a we're in of a bit of a pickle, uh, and our our thing has ended, uh, but we're still live. <laughs> we're live yes, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere <laughs> we're alive. Well, um, yes, we, we missed our uh, co-panelists um, yeah. and and here, uh, but it's just the sign that it's to be continued. Absolutely. We'll be back here tomorrow, same time, everybody. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'd love to keep in touch with everybody. Just let's see what ideas we can come up with and how we yes. can work together. Yeah, you know, I think that's the biggest thing because as an investment banker, uh, my whole life has been trained uh, competitively uh, to be the first to market, uh, to be the first with the innovation. Uh, and to look over my shoulder all the time and see if you are catching up from behind. And that's business. That's capitalism and that's business. That's the way we do it. Um, but this new end of uh, us, like even if you took the three of us and said, okay, uh, you've all got unique skill sets. Uh, one of you's in solar, one's in this, one's in hydrogen, the other one's out there raising money, whatever. Uh, if we could uh, create formats where the three of us believed we would get much further as a co-op than we would individually. And if anything is showing us that, uh, it's COVID-19. Yeah, I've never seen in my backgrounds in medicine and in medicine, we compete to the death, like to the death on everything. Uh, and to watch uh, whole scientific communities uh, walk out and say, there's all our stuff, everything we got. Everything we got. You want to use it? You think it'll make things better? Use it. Uh, and, you know, I'm hoping um, COVID is a great uh, teacher because if you had us on a panel and you said, uh, would it be okay with you if you all worked from your houses, uh, everybody shut down, everybody do this, everybody wear a, We'd say, are you nuts? We're not doing that. There's no way. Uh, but an unbeatable force that ignores us walks into town and says, do whatever you want, but you better protect yourself from me. <laughs> and we did. And we did. Uh, so I'm I'm going on uh, that theme. I want to collaborate with people. Uh, I'm very concerned that the message is mixed. Uh, we've got a lot of people saying climate change is a hoax. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so I think there's work on all fronts. But mm -hmm. instead of being discouraged by these people saying these things. Uh, form our own coalitions and just say, you know what, we know it's a problem. Like, we know it's a big problem. Uh, let them catch up later on uh, and come to us. Yeah. I mean, I found with COVID, it really took us, turned us to take action. We couldn't wait. Yeah. I mean, people were literally dying, food, medicine. Like, we even got calls from morgues for these things. It was ridiculous. And um, just getting people out there, getting people to do it, understanding it. Now everybody's like, oh, what happens if the next thing happens? We need these. You know, when I was, we've been trying and trying and trying. So in one sense, COVID made people realize that things can happen. We need to yeah. work together. We need to be prepared. 
And so let's finish on this note um, as to working together and bring it to uh, reality, at least, you know, three of us. Um, I think, I think cool. we'll be live forever. Exactly. <laughs> I, think we should close. I think we should close and go because there is um, um, there is a um, cocktail or something okay. like this we to join because there is a uh, matching there. Well, thank you so much and uh, bye everyone. Bye-bye. We'll be Thank in you touch. so much. We'll be in touch. Bye, right, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Casper.